Hi and welcome to another study in the book of Proverbs. Tonight we're in chapter 10 verse 7 which says the memory of the righteous is a blessing but the reputation of the wicked will rot. Now memory is from something in the past and reputation is something in, in the present. Memory is in Hebrew the word zeker and it can be used as reputation or fame. It's often how others see you and, and will continue to. Um, reputation is a very interesting word here. It's the word Shem. It's the word name in Hebrew. And pious Jews, one, one name for God that they have, no pun intended, is Hashem, the name. And, you know, when people are in need, they call on the name of God. And they call on the name of God because of his reputation. He has the reputation as a God who saves. At work, when I settle a case, I settle it in the name of the United States government. And if I mess up in that case, I tarnish the name of the United States government. So I have to take that into consideration all the time the name of, of my employer, of my government, that <clears throat> I have to make sure that I dot all my I's and cross all my T's so that I don't tarnish that, so that you, that you uh, trust your government. Now, it's easy for us to tarnish our names, but God, of course, never tarnishes His. The word here for rot means to die away slowly, lingering, and it's it's hard to re, to reverse that the longer you let it go at least in a worldly way but there's a there is a rotting that can be reversed immediately just like that and that's the rotting that comes with sin and, and damnation we all start as fallible human beings filled with sin and start to rot. And as we rot, we have one hope. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting in verse 42, says this, But someone will ask, How are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come? So we're talking about dead people being raised from the dead. How foolish. What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. So you have to be dead before you start this process. When you sow, you do not plant the body that will be, but just a seed, perhaps of wheat or of something else. But God gives it a body as, as he has determined, and to each kind of seed he gives its own body. Not all flesh is the same. People have one kind of flesh, animals have another, birds another, and fish another. There are also heavenly bodies and there are earthly bodies. But the splendor of the heavenly bodies is one kind and the splendor of the earthly bodies is another. The sun has one kind of splendor, the moon another, and the stars another, and the stars differ from star, and star differs from star in splendor. So will it be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable, so it rots. It is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. So they're talking about Adam, our ancestor, and Jesus. The spiritual did not come first, but the natural, and after that the spiritual. The first man was of dust of the earth, the second man is of heaven. As was the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth, and as in the heavenly man, so also are those who are of heaven. 
And just as we have borne the image of the earthly man, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly man, if we want to. I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. So you have to stop the rotting. Listen, I tell you a mystery. And there he goes again. Listen, we will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, are you ready to... Um, Stop that perishable tonight and start to put on that imperishable. We're all going to die unless the Lord comes before that happens. You know, as Pastor Joe at Calvary Chapel used to say, you have to decide what your seating is. Do you want to go smoking or non-smoking? As for me, I've chosen non-smoking. And... It's easy to do. All you have to do is ask Him. All you have to do is ask Him to save you. And He'll do it. He'll forgive your sins. He'll make you one of these people that we're raising about who are going to be raised up at the last trumpet to be with Him forever. Now I'm praying tonight that your memory will be a blessing. Not because of anything that you did on your own, but because tonight you didn't look to your own name. You didn't look to your own reputation. But you called on the name of the Lord because of His reputation. And I pray this name in the precious name. Or I'm sorry, I pray this prayer in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. See you next time.